All right, Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, Daily Fail, the meme review, software releases, and the websites by plebs. As always, if you like the show, drop us a like and subscribe. All right, let's go. We're going to the numbers. Let's do it. All right, we're currently at a block height of 680, 205 current Bitcoin price. 51,960. It's stackable. Chain rewrite days, 665. Oh, it just keeps getting more secure. Total lightning capacity, 1,204.96. I feel like that's the exact same number as yesterday. Yeah, that's uh, weird. Versus gold market cap, 8.38%. Sats per dollar, a cringe, 1,931. Oh, so and it's funny, right? Like I'm saying, like I'm acting like it's so bad, but like, really? <laughs> 1900 no. sats per dollar. I remember when it was like 30,000 sats per dollar. <laughs> no, we're obviously being uh, hyperbolic. You know, cheaper sats, bro. You're exactly right. Cheaper sats at these prices. But yeah. man, that hash rate tumble that happened in China with that with that flood or that fire, right? Um, man, that that that's that's what caused the price to drop this way, bro. It just man, it's just it's crazy how it's connected, but it was a little bit delayed. The hash rate dropped, Phil, and then the price followed soon after. And unfortunately, Phil, I don't think uh will recover until the hash rate starts recovering. So as soon as this, the hash rate starts yep. recovering, I think we should be good. But we're also speculating. <laughs> Anyways, Phil, it's yeah, time for it. The daily fail. All right, everyone. Today's daily fail is kind of short and sweet. All right. So Yahoo Finance, they're, they're talking about Dogecoin, you know, created as a joke. Chamber of Digital Commerce President uh, Perianne Boring. <laughs> That's funny. Says, <laughs> later, I, it should not be compared to Bitcoin, which is ah! a store of value. True. Dogecoin lacks many fundamental attributes of a serious cryptocurrency. Also true. And then this random dude. BTC is really a store of value. How is the intrinsic value derived? Any free FCF is uh, free cash flow. Whoa, this comment, it makes no sense. Oh, gosh. You know, this is so when I see stuff like this, it's it's bittersweet, right? It's it's bitter because you clearly understand that this person has no fucking clue what Bitcoin is or how it works, but yet is willing to take the strong stance that um, it's not a store of value because it has no free cash flow. I have yet to find a currency that has free cash flow in their in their model. Um, be very interested when I do find one. Uh, but like, it just goes to show that like this person's comparing it to a stock. They're comparing Bitcoin to a stock. I, you know, don't get me wrong, but like that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff I was doing too when I had no idea what I was doing. And it's really scary because if that person doesn't decide to take the next step to educate themselves about Bitcoin then they're going to be stuck in like an endless shit coiner loop or even worse. Well, not worse. Equivalent. No coiner loop. Oof. Even worse. The no coiner loop is, is, is <laughs> definitely worse. It can't be money. Why is this going up? It can't <laughs> be money. Why is it? Ah, I can't buy it now. Man, listen, <laughs> the whole Doge situation is just absolutely hilarious because it just completely disproves all of the other fucking shitcoin narratives. It just shows that this is a fucking joke. And man, that Yahoo article, we are so early, Phil. Oh, yeah. We are so early. Oh you read stuff like that and you're like, this is what they're thinking? You know, like, god damn, man. So, uh, so, so, you know, gold has free cash flow. Did you know that? Man, right? Like, because we're talking about all these different stores of value. Oh, gold has free ca free cash flow. Apparently, all these countries' currencies, you know, these fiat currencies, they'll have free cash flow. <laughs> so this is this is our metric now for Bitcoin. We're, we're gonna try to figure out Bitcoin's free cash flow. <laughs> yep, <sighs> man. But uh, is this a have fun staying poor moment? Yeah, this is a have fun staying poor. <laughs> Phil, do you want to do the honors? Because I don't know the name. I don't know it either, but he is definitely <laughs> going to have fun staying poor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Phil, it's time for the Daily Meme Review. All right, everybody. The meme for today is <laughs> it's brought to us by at whole huddle. These nuts. Awesome name. Definitely. a. Do I see laser eyes? Definitely a pleep. Dude, name phenomenal. Give this guy a follow just because of his name. His content might be trash, but his name is awesome. And his content is probably awesome because of how awesome is. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Anyways. Now you're stuck in a loop. <laughs> <laughs> let's check out. Let's check out. Um, let's check out this meme. It's by 
I already said poo it's by. Anyways, let's check it out. <laughs> Noobs, <laughs> Rel Pool. <laughs> Sorry. Noobs, Rel Pool, Paul, Pom. <laughs> yep. Uh, Took a little Probably bit. We could have my- added Pedro to that picture too. Uh, I'm sorry. Go on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. Girl. I'm gonna change my score because of what you said. Hmm. Okay. Because Uh-oh. of what you said, now I'm gonna give it an avocado. But it's not any avocado. It's an avocado de Mexico. Anyways, Phil, what are you gonna give it? Man, nutritious and tasty. I don't know if I could top that. Okay. Look, I thought that was. I thought that was hilarious. And and of course, you know, we it. It has to be said, right? You know, fuck Ralph Paul and fuck Pomp. So, you know, with that being said, I'm going to have to go. I got to go something big. I got to find something real big. All right. Hold on a second. All right. We're going with. I don't remember what this thing is called, <laughs> but you know what this thing is. <laughs> it's, the, it's the helping hand. Phil, no, f- the helping hand oh that helps my. you with soldering stuff. Oh my god, dude! You had to. I keep getting one up. It's not fair that I do. I do, I do the rating first. It. I always get screwed. Okay, every I'll single do the time. rating next. How about I do the rating next, and then you try to top my weird shit? Okay. All right. Okay. okay fair okay, enough. So okay. how about that? T- tomorrow <laughs> I'll do the rating first. All right. All right. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Anyways, Phil, it's time for the daily news, sponsored by. Crypto cloaks. All right, everybody, check out the headline from Reuters today. Biden to propose almost doubling capital gains tax rate for wealthy individuals. I'm not even going to comment. I'm just going to let the Chad comment. I can't just tax all the Bitcoin in California. It'll move to Wyoming. It'll move to Singapore. It'll move to Malta. And at the end of the day, you can tell everybody to go fuck themselves. You can put it in your head, memorize the freaking key. Right. And it's here. And then, you know, the classic Bitcoiner response is, oh, yeah, my Bitcoin, uh, I lost it in a boating accident. You ever heard that phrase? It's, it's kind of a trope. But what it means is at the end of the day, if you push me too far, I lost it. It's gone. Sorry. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is pushing it really way too freaking far. Man, and they and it's crazy because governments have been able to get away with this because they've been able to control the money. But man, as soon as you you see these crazy government politics, whether it's coming from the right, whether it's coming from the left, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. They hold you hostage because they use the traditional banking system as an enforcement arm of the government, right? So this is exactly why Bitcoin exists, right? Because, man, you see these ridiculous laws and you leave. You leave. Portugal doesn't have cap gains tax on Bitcoin. I'm sure that other countries are going to join that as well, man. So it's not that people don't like paying taxes. It's that when you make the taxes absurd to pay for things that perhaps you don't agree with, again, we are apolitical on the show, left or right, right? We just think it's ridiculous, right? Um, that, you know, the government just takes, just decides to tax you more, even though they have an unlimited money printer. It's not fair. They print to pay for their stuff, but they, they want to tax you anyways. So... This is why Bitcoin exists, Phil. This is exactly why Bitcoin exists, because it gives the individual the power back. Phil? Yeah, I look, I I completely agree. You know, so before I I thought this system was was jogging, you know, was jogging to its own end. But after seeing that, and I know there's going to be more stupid decisions that are going to come out of, you know, the current administration. Um, regardless of what side it is, I don't give a shit. It makes no difference. It's all the same party and they're all bought by lobbyists. So I agree. Who pretends that there's two is, I'm sorry, there isn't. We're all being played. But anyways, my point is, is that, you know, now we're not, we're not jogging anymore. We're like sprinting for the end. Okay. Because all that this is going to do is force more people to put more energy, right? And more resources into building the Bitcoin ecosystem. Because we all completely understand that once that ecosystem grows out enough, the gatekeepers are now no longer watching a gate. The gate doesn't exist anymore. And now they've got a problem and they've got to find a way to make themselves um, provide value 
for the first time in their freaking lives. Actual value. It's crazy. It's like as if Bitcoin is going to make the government actually work for the people. Imagine that. Crazy idea. You know, I, I, I remember learning that the governments are supposed to serve their people, but they seem to only serve the lobbyists and the interests who pay them. And, you know, the central bankers. They love oh, the yeah. central totally bankers. I totally forgot about those. Yeah, you can't, can't forget about look at, them. Look at Turkey banning purchases of Bitcoin, right? But I, I'm sure the people hate that, but I'm sure the central bankers love that, man. So uh, bought and paid for it. But speaking of government and speaking of government being crap, Phil, check this out. The Postal Service is running a covert operations program that monitors American social media posts. I think we're in a time right now that it just like ridiculous things like this that just would normally like, you know, in like a quiet year, it would just be like, <gasps> but in a year, like with the pandemic and all this stuff going on, you see this phone and it doesn't shock you, but it should check out the article. The law enforcement arm of the U.S. Postal Service has been quietly running, quietly running a program that tracks and collects American social media posts. The work involves having analysts Thrall, thrall, thrall through social media sites to look for what the document describes as an inflammatory postings and then sharing that information across government agencies. Okay, so why is the government seeing what you're looking at if they're not going to use that against you? And these are the same people that want to have a central bank digital currency. Do you see the problem here? What's the government to stop you saying, listen, we don't like you because you like 3D printers. Let's just cut off your wallet because that's exactly what central bank digital currencies is going to allow them to do. To do. You see this in China already with their social credit system. Phil? You know what? This is pathetic, disgusting, and deplorable. <laughs> those, are, those are the three words that came to mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I, I know I'm laughing about it, but it's not funny. I mean, th this is just absolutely psychotic, right? The the, the postal service, really? You know, like th th this is what they're coming up with. This is th look. Don't get me wrong. This is what they're spending your money on. This is what they're spending my money on. Th th this is exactly what is happening, right? We're we're paying. We, we are we are actually paying for our own shackles, and and we're asking for them. I mean, and it's coming from every corner. And it's like you said, right? In a regular year, we'd be all like, oh my gosh, you know? And we'd be all up in arms. But because of all the garbage that we've just gone through in the last year and a half, we see this and it's just like another nail in the coffin. And and yeah, we should absolutely be worried. And it's it's a part of the problem. You know, that that is getting scary. Like they are gathering all of this data. Why are they gathering this data, right? What levels... What levels of control or levers, excuse me, of control are they trying to put in place to, uh, you know, to to essentially direct us in whatever direction it is that they're trying to get us all to go? You know, I mean, at this point, all I've understood is confusion, disinformation and lies, lies. Flat out this is, lies. These are the things I've understood. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen, dude. Very well said, Phil. And uh, man, <laughs> speaking of more <laughs> great examples uh, of Bitcoin lessons, you know, that that lesson being, you know, not your not your keys, not your Bitcoin. Check this out, Phil. Turkish crypto exchange goes offline. <laughs> CEO is conveniently missing. I say conveniently. <laughs> I say conveniently because <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Um, the Thordex was trading more than $585 million in cryptocurrencies when he disappeared. So uh, apparently the Turkish authorities are looking for him. But uh, <laughs> just a good example of, uh, you know, never keep your, your Bitcoin on an exchange, bro. Not your Bitcoin. I mean, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And uh, that guy, you will never see him again. Phil? So in 2017, <laughs> we used to call that an exit scam. Now it's, I think, more appropriately termed a rug pull. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you know, it's you can't you can't trust these people. You, you know, like what you think just because they demand your information and the site looks all pretty that they're legit. 
I, I mean, you can polish a turd. It's still garbage. It's still shit. That is one big pile of shit. Doesn't matter that you put a bow tie on it. Anyways, yeah, that, that guy, I mean, look, if you do see him again, it's just going to be random parts of him. Um, I, I don't think it'll be entirely him. So, <laughs> just saying, you know, the, oh my God. you know, the, the millions of dollars goes missing, then he conveniently goes missing, and then all of a sudden he conveniently, parts of him turn up. Dude, that's a <laughs> lot. Know? That's a lot of, that's a lot of, of, of money, man. That's a that, lot yeah, of money. Yeah, exactly. And you, $585 million, dude. <laughs> and, and, and like, who knows whose money that is, oh, right? Man. Somebody oh. who's maybe less than moral, you know, like who knows, maybe somebody who really needs that money back and yeah. has the resources <laughs> to get it back. Oh, in, in a non, oh, in, a, in a third world country, dude, because uh, Turkey isn't exactly first world, man. So, oh, man, they do have really nice beaches, though, and the food there is really good. I have a friend that lives out there, so, oh, man, no, it's beautiful. I love the country. Gorgeous. It's, you know? it's beautiful country. Beautiful but you're, country. Yeah, I get what you're saying. But I mean, from the security aspect, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Indeed. From the security aspect, I didn't mean it from I love his symbol. But no, anyways, no, I understood. I understood what you meant. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> Phil, I left this treat for you. Check this out. This is a, a conservative can, Canadian politician that you're going to help me pronounce his name. <laughs> oh, you think I can pronounce his name? Uh, what is that? Pierre Poil Poilievre? I don't know. You just Pierre... answer, you just answered your own question, Phil. Do you know, think I, can... I could? You brother, that was a, like an expert, man. I can Pierre... barely pronounce it. Okay, but anyways, that doesn't matter. But check out what this politician is pointing out. They're actually pointing out the scam, the money printing scam. But anyways, I'm gonna shut up and play the video. Today is an occasion for us to pay a visit to a once again renewed popular idea called modern monetary theory. Uh, we should put modern in quotation marks because it's a very old idea. Thousands of years old, if the truth be told. But once again, it is being presented as new. And it is this. It is the idea that governments can spend as much as they want and to pay for it, they simply print the cash. They create the money because, of course, the bank which they own, in our case, the Bank of Canada, has a monopoly on the creation of that currency. So why not just create more money in order to spend it? The only limit on the amount that can be spent is when said money creation leads to inflation. OK, well, you, you get the point now. OK, yeah. so <laughs> you have politicians now pointing out uh. this. <laughs> That uh, you see in the Fed money supply. <laughs> so you're saying there's nothing backing the money, huh? Uh, no. Hey, so just print it. But hey, but yeah. remember, Bitcoin's not backed by anything. Remember? Yeah, Bitcoin's a scam, but don't look at this fake shit. Oh, man. Even <laughs> no, but I mean, I, you know, really just to, you know, this is getting scary. I mean, that guy, I, I'd be afraid being that guy. Because he's telling the truth to a bunch of people that absolutely know that they are completely full of shit, and they don't want to. They, they don't want to hear the truth being told back to them. And they okay? just took away everyone's guns. <laughs> yeah, well, don't get me wrong, but in Canada, they've taken away their guns a long time ago, and yeah. So it's. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can get a gun. You know, you can get a permit and everything like that. But the rules and the laws are very stringent, and it's not like. It's not like in the U.S. or in certain states, you know, you can go and get a gun. Not, I wouldn't say easily, but definitely easier uh, than in Canada. So, yeah, it's they've, scary. they've disarmed Canada a long time ago, and everybody's very complacent, unfortunately. I shouldn't say everybody, but the majority of people are complacent. It's, it's scary, Phil, that they're not even trying to hide it anymore. Yeah. It, it, they're not even trying to hide it. That guy just said it. Exactly what's happening. Yep. And the other side's just like... Yep. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. It's crazy. But, Everyone uh, gets poor and uh, life goes on. But this is why we have Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, but anyways, Phil, there was a software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. All right. We've got Phoenix Wallet version 1.4.10 that was released. And that is down below in the show notes. 
Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was our show. You know what to do. If you enjoyed the episode, smash that like button. And of course, if you love the show, definitely consider subscribing. Definitely if you want to keep hearing the news from the Bitcoin plea pleb perspective and the catastrophic fiat fails and the shitcoin fails. And of course, we will see you tomorrow for another episode of Simply Bitcoin.